Uh, welcome to MTC uh, CTO Roundtable event. Uh, this is uh, first ever. We uh, done many different events, but uh, we never done uh, something which we call CTO Roundtable. So I have to start. I know you you say thank you. It's an end, but I have to start with a thank you. First of all, so first of all, thank you our host at and Thank you for having us here. Uh, thank you to uh, Global Inventures, uh, our management uh, company, who did a lot of hard work to get this event together. Uh, uh, you, uh, you all met Julie. Uh, she's uh, outside. She was uh, giving you your badges. And uh, here's uh, Paul Ritchie, our uh, uh, executive director. So these people are key to our organization. They, uh, uh, they help IMTC do what, uh, what it have to do. Uh, and uh, I have to thank Pravda Media, our marketing organization, uh, who is uh, they, uh, uh, doing all the marketing services for MTC. Unfortunately, our VP marketing, Kfir Pravda, cannot be here. Uh, but uh, at least he sent one of his uh, people, uh, Guy uh, Nasher. He's in the back of the room. He's going to make recordings, and then we'll produce some um, um, uh, good materials out of it. Thank you all. Thank you all our speakers. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for taking time uh, and present and talk about uh, the issues which we are facing as an industry. And uh, of course, thank you to all of our guests. Thanks for being here. So let's just very briefly. Uh, some of you know what IMTC is. Some of you don't. Uh, so let me just very briefly uh, introduce the organization. So uh, uh, we have been around uh, since 94. This is where the organization started. It had a uh, slightly different name. Uh, Matt probably remembers. I don't. Uh, but uh, God, right. uh, But uh, we, we, we started with the idea of um, uh, advancing uh, the video communication industry, really. Uh, and uh, so uh, right now we are, uh, that's who we are. We are more than 30 market leaders uh, working together in a unified communications and multimedia content delivery field. And uh, uh, we are a non-profit organization. And uh, we are really focusing on the interoperable and standard-based products. Uh, this is some of the, these are not all of our members. This is some of our members uh, worldwide. Uh, and we have, uh, ongoing relationship with a lot of uh, standards organizations uh, and uh, uh, around the world, uh, 3GPP, ITUT, and IETF, and so on and so on. So we have uh, liaison relationships with them. Uh, the mission is very simple. Mission of uh, IMTC is to uh, improve customer experience and accelerate market adoption of content delivery and unified communication solutions through interoperability of products and services based on open standards. OK, so forgive me for, for reading that, but this is, uh, I don't want to memorize something like that. But really, this is what we do. This is, uh, so IMTC does, uh, the, the number one IMTC is uh, uh, working on the interoperability of all the communication uh, applications, all the IP communication applications nowadays. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then we, we have the technology exchange. Uh, we, we, we educate industry. We educate uh, ourselves. We educate the market on uh, uh, what's going on. So that's, uh, this, is, this is our mission as an organization. So goals and objectives. Uh, th this, this presentation, let's say, it more of a reference point. Uh, I don't want to like make it really boring. We, we just open in, a, I, I think, a very exciting day. But what we're looking at, we, we want to identify what is stopping us. What, uh, and and this, is what I, this event will be all about. I identify obstacles to growth and success of the industry. And then, uh, so once we know what's, uh, what is the problem, then we can work to address it. And that's what we do. Uh, we facilitate interoperability. Uh, from the very beginning of the organization, we run interoperability <coughs> testing events. Uh, every year, we have a flagship event called SuperOp, where uh, this is a major event where everybody comes together. Uh, and we've done uh, since, since um, I believe the, the very first one was in the uh, 96 uh, time frame. And uh, we, we never stopped since then. And, uh, uh, and, and then, in addition to SuperOp, uh, all of our activity groups get together, do the testing, and they do it uh, three, four times a year, de depending on the activity. So we, we, we've done hundreds of interoperability testing events. That's, that's really what we do. We facilitate interoperability. And then the output of those uh, interoperability testings go back to the standards bodies, go back to other organizations, and go back to uh, really go back to our members, go back to implement and be addressing the equipment. 
And, uh, okay. So we, we really want to help industry. This is our goals and objectives in, the, in a very short words. These are uh, the main groups. This is, uh, th this is the, uh, all the groups where IMTC is uh, doing its work currently. We have a lot of uh, activities around telepresence. We have a group focusing on uh, TIP, uh, specifically on TIP interoperability, uh, because from the middle of last year, IMTC owns uh, TIP, uh, which was previously Cisco TIP protocol. It's really now IMTC TIP protocol. We work in the area of uh, uh, packet switch streaming, which is really uh, all, the, all those uh, wonderful video broadcasts which you are um, getting on your handsets, uh, the, as long as they delivered over IP, are most likely uh, common and good quality because of all the work done in uh, IMTC. Uh, CIP parity is uh, making, uh, this is the, uh, I'm sorry, the, there is uh, a the very active group right now uh, working on the voice over LTE. Uh, which is a new reincarnation of uh, really IMS, uh, and uh, th there is a huge push right now from all the sides of the market to make it happen, actually, so it, uh, hopefully it will be happening, and MTC is uh, where, where, where we create all the testing plans for, for that. SIP Priority is uh, working on making actually SIP video implementations actually interop uh, on the level of uh, H2O3. It's still not here. And uh, the H2O3 uh, is still literally de facto standard for enterprise video communications. And this is where we are working on making uh, SIP also useful for the same purpose. Conference and telepresence interoperability, this is a couple of groups. Uh, metadata, these are the newer groups we're focusing on the requirements for uh, uh, really um, communications. And uh, uh, 3G, 3 to 4 m this is the group which uh, had been around for a while. This is, uh, uh, unfortunately, here in the U.S., we don't uh, really benefit the uh, fruits of their labor because we don't do mobile video here. Uh, at least we have not done before before uh, Apple time. But uh, 3G, 3 to 4 m had been used in Europe in uh, 2004, 2005 in order to deliver video content, video two-way video communications uh, in Europe and in Asia. Very popular, uh, we, we, a lot of companies in, in this room had their products, so we've done it. Uh, we, we, uh, we have a group which, ha uh, then we have the group which we call IPR, which is a huge historical archive of the MPEG uh, standardization data and uh, JPEG standardization archives. It, it's, uh, it's probably very few people in this room know about that, unfortunately. Uh, th this is kind of an IMC hidden secret. But uh, really, we had uh, people use that uh, archives uh, in, in various circumstances. And of course, we do marketing. And oh, and I didn't was supposed to delete that slide. So anyway, um, and now again, welcome to CTO Roundtable. And this is where we all want to be, right? This is, and we're in the cold New Jersey right now, but this, this looks nice, right? This looks, uh, uh, it looks good, right? So that's, once we're done with our work, that's where we're going to go, right? But we have to ensure first that everything is working together, everything is interoperable. Everything is great. So why, why are we here? Why are we here? Because the industry is changing. The industry is, uh, nowadays, industry is changing dramatically. And uh, video communications all of a sudden become thing which uh, everybody are interested in, everybody are uh, very well, um, uh, I mean, want to discuss. Uh, Dave uh, told me he was at uh, Enterprise Connect session, uh, uh, and, and the session, 8 o'clock in the morning. His session never had more than 20 participants, never. The last Enterprise Connect, which was just the last week, he had 300. 300 people were there with questions because they, the video is happening right now, and this is, uh, and, and I mean, th this is what we've been uh, going for, and this is what uh, we, we were looking for to happen, but it's, it's actually happening. It's actually happening right now. And this is, that's kind of, that happens like that, right? Well, this is the volcano eruption from the last year, which uh, got in the way of our uh, super op event and so on. But, but nevertheless, this is, uh, uh, visual communication is, is really everywhere. And just look at this, just, just look at all this stuff. It, it's everywhere, right? The problem is that none of these devices will work together. None of them, literally. Well, maybe there will be some rare and few exceptions. However, 
most of the staff will not work together. And, and this is what we want to solve. I don't know if it's possible. I really don't. However, that's what we, what, that, that's where we want to be. We want to make this all work together. We want to make this all interoperable. We want to make these devices to communicate seamlessly. What I really wanted to, I, I didn't put it in here, but really uh, our role model is a simple old telephone. If you think about it, you leave that handset, you put in the numbers, doesn't matter how many, as long as you know how many numbers to put in. It's, yeah, it's inconvenient and uh, my son would not like it. He's using FaceTime to communicate and uh, he, he would not, he doesn't dial, I'm assuming. The, he, I mean, everything is presence based, of course, but, but really, but still, this is the, the, the old telephone is our role model because it was simple and you could reach anyone. Anyone in the world with the phone, you can reach. So we're not there, and uh, hopefully we can there, maybe one day. And, uh, but video is here, and uh, we, that's, we have to work on uh, making it work great. So with that comes all the challenges, and uh, we, we're going to talk about it. So I just put a list of a uh, few. Everything is in clusters. Uh, FaceTime works only with FaceTime. Skype mostly works only with Skype. And, uh, uh, and then the Cisco telepresence will be mostly in their own cloud, and, and so on and so on. So this is uh, clusterization. Uh, everybody wants to bring their devices to work. Consumerization of IT, and now IT cannot do anything about it. We've got a whole bunch of protocols we need to put together. Uh, we got how, how do we dial across enterprises? Yes, there are there are some solutions. There is Cisco IME and everything, but we, we don't say this is how we do it as an industry. I mean, we, we just we just leave it outside more or less in a cloud. I mean, in the cluster, everything was great. Try to cross the boundary, not easy. We want quality of experience. We have to ensure that the video looks good, that the video is uh, understandable, palatable, appealing, and uh, people can actually see each other. This is, uh, there are firewalls. So, but the question is how we can help. This is, this is the idea behind this event. This is why we're all together. Uh, this is why we uh, created this first of a kind event. Uh, what we want to do is to, uh, we want to listen, we want, uh, we want you to, to share your pain, to share your, of course, the success, but, but success and pain, which uh, usually comes together. Uh, we want you to share that. And then we want to take it in, we want to process that, and we want to see how IMTC can help. Uh, we, we've done it for, uh, yes, we've done it for 17 years. But we continue, we go in, uh, we want to help. We want to help the industry, we want to help the users, we want to help for to everything work together. And if anyone, the slides will be available to everybody, so the, all the contact information, how to reach MTC is here. So, and with that, thank you, then I'm done with the introduction. And with that, I would like to introduce our host for the, uh, for the next two days. And uh, essentially, uh, this is someone who doesn't need any introduction, because absolute majority of people know him very well. But uh, this is uh, Andrew Davis uh, from uh, Wayne House Research. Uh, who's Today will be to uh, introduce the speakers and to keep things moving, hopefully stir a little controversy. Um, I see, I recognize many of the people in the room. There are some, some of you here I don't know. Um, please make sure we get to shake hands before the event is over while we're still friends. Um, and thinking about um, your introduction, which, um, <clears throat> I think sets the scene for the day, which is what are, the, what are the obstacles to success for the industry? And by the way, you talked about the industry. I'm not sure what the industry uh, really is. Uh, what are the obstacles and what can we do as a, as a group uh, to help overcome the obstacles? Um, <clears throat> before I introduce uh, Eric Newton, uh, let me just say, while you were talking, I was taking notes and thinking about this. I think, um, you know, we all know the old joke, the nice thing about standards is there's so many to choose from. Um, <clears throat> and I think we've, we face that uh, ever, uh, even more uh, today. I was thinking about technologies like IP, SIP, uh, the IMS, UC, uh, and then all the uh, video algorithms uh, that we all uh, can put in the technology bucket, as well as uh, a new set of technologies around mobile and mobility which I think is one of the key forces that are driving the industry from a technology point of view. Uh, what's new today, we also have 
uh, players that we didn't have a few years ago. A few years ago, uh, in the video space and certainly in the IP communication space, all the companies that we dealt with were what I'd call small companies uh, based on uh, the Fortune 500 rankings. Today we have uh, Cisco, Microsoft, HP, IBM, Avaya. We have some real uh, giants that have come into the IP communications industry and have helped uh, bring this to the attention of a lot of, a lot of customers. Um, Anatoly talked about platforms. You had all, a picture of all the different devices. <clears throat> I think one of the challenges we all will learn to live with is device proliferation, whether it's tablets, pads, cell phones, PCs, Macintoshes, uh, telepresence suites, or whatnot. Uh, I do believe that a few years ago, uh, some of us, myself included, thought that the industry would ultimately coalesce around uh, a Wintel type of architecture, um, high performance uh, Intel chips with Windows, and basically that would be the foundation for almost every device. That's clearly, uh, the PC is clearly not going to dominate. Uh, it's going to be a significant player, but I think that uh, lots of other technologies and uh, the mobility issue and being able to carry little things with you and do video calls is going to drive a lot of the industry. So we have device and platform proliferation. We have player proliferation. We have standards proliferation. We even had standards bodies uh, proliferation. I was impressed with the list. Um, I always think of the ITU, but in fact, or the IETF. In fact, that, those are just two of several players uh, in the market. So, uh, and then the last thing <clears throat> we've all talked about, driving the industry, helping all of us uh, in a way that we don't want to be helped, is what I call the external factors. Uh, Anatoly showed a picture of the volcano. Uh, we all know that uh, in the service provider community, when the volcano hit, uh, business for some of them doubled and tripled overnight. Uh, it, w it was a bubble, didn't last forever, uh, whereas in the hardware side, I think it helped things, but of course, people don't turn around and go out and buy a bunch of video conferencing rooms the next day because of a volcano. But I think what it has done is it's shown companies, uh, the end user community, as well as those here in the room, you need to be prepared for these kinds of things, and you need to be able to keep your people productive when they can't come to work when they can't get to the meeting. And of course, most of us here in the room are involved with tools and solutions that enable people to be productive from remote locations. So uh, <clears throat> what I call the, the fear factor, and nobody wants to say, you know, fear is good, it helps my business. But in fact, the fear factor and preparing for unpleasant events, whether it's volcanoes or um, uh, eruptions of SARS or other unpleasant diseases is something that helps drive this. It, we're all aware of the, what's going on today in the Middle East and uh, current gasoline prices I see are going up 10 or 20 cents a gallon per day uh, in some places. And that again is going to draw um, <clears throat> American attention at least, if not worldwide attention, uh, to the need to uh, avoid travel, which will become expensive. And again, nobody wants to say that we're benefiting. As an industry, we benefit from disruptions in the Middle East. But in fact, these things create forces outside our industry which help draw people into our industry. So those are some of the, the, the key buckets um, I was thinking about while Anatoly was giving his presentation. And uh, I'm going to try and keep this moving today. As I said, uh, I think we want to keep it interactive and um, not, not go through death by PowerPoint to the extent that we can avoid it and uh, ask questions and hopefully get some uh, interactive discussion and maybe even a few uh, disagreements and arguments going. Uh, with that, um, let me introduce uh, the first speaker who uh, you can see from the slide, Eric Newton.